Hello and welcome to The Arise interview, 60 minutes of multifaceted discussion where we speak to the newsmakers as well as ordinary people doing extraordinary things and we feature the voices at the heart of the stories. I'm Charles Aniagolo. Coming up in the next hour, Brazil in the 21st century has become a major global player. With a booming economy and massive social changes, there is a swagger to this once sleeping giant. But what do we know of it apart from football and carnival? We'll speak exclusively to the Brazilian Foreign Minister Ernesto Araujo about his country's relations with Nigeria and Africa, about the global alarm raised over the burning of the Amazon rainforest, and the feeling that President Jair Bolsonaro is prioritizing economic exploitation over environmental protection. And later, as the UN marks International Universal Health Coverage Day, aimed at raising awareness of the need for strong and resilient health systems and accelerating progress towards universal health coverage, we ask how committed is Nigeria and other African countries to making bigger and smarter investments in health in a moment. Now, Brazil is South America's most influential country, a rising economic power and one of the world's biggest democracies. A former Portuguese colony, Brazil has a highly diverse population, including indigenous Americans and the descendants of African slaves and European settlers. Over the past few years, it has made major strides in its efforts to raise millions out of poverty, although the gap between rich and poor remains wide. Brazil has been keen to develop stronger trade and cultural ties with African countries, particularly in Nigeria. And in furtherance of that, the Brazilian Foreign Minister Ernesto Araujo has been visiting Abuja, holding bilateral talks on trade, investment and defence. Well, he's been speaking exclusively to Arise News about his visit to Nigeria and a lot more. We'll hear from him in a moment. But first, here's a brief profile of Brazil. Brazil. Brazil is a country known for its infectious culture and its amazing landscapes, but it is also a country that is growing in global importance. It is the largest country in South America and by far it has the largest and fastest growing economy in the region, with a growth rate of 5% per year. Brazil is the fifth largest country in the world with a total land area of 8,515,766 square kilometers. That makes it slightly larger than Australia and slightly smaller than the USA. It is also the world's fifth most populous country with 205,338,000 people. It is the world's longest country from north to south with a total length of 4,395 kilometers. So it shares land borders with 10 countries in South America. To the east, Brazil's coastline is 7,491 kilometers long, making it the longest continuous coastline in the world. The country is also pretty big from east to west, big enough to span four time zones. Brazil's climate is largely tropical, but because the country is so large and because it has a variety of elevations, the climate differs from one region to another. The north of the country is located on the equator and has a tropical climate with warm temperatures that vary little throughout the year and rainfall year round. The central plateau is at a higher elevation, so it has slightly lower temperatures, especially at night. And it is further from the equator, so it has more seasonal variation and a definite dry season. Closer to the south of the country, around and below the Tropic of Capricorn, the seasonal differences are more extreme with hotter summer temperatures and colder winter temperatures. Every year there is snowfall in some of the towns and the higher areas in the southern region. This is quite different from the typical image of Rio de Janeiro, isn't it? This southern area accounts for about 10% of the country. The coastal plains are generally warm and tropical year-round. A little snippet of Brazil there. Well, the Brazilian Foreign Minister Ernesto Araujo has been speaking exclusively to Arise News about his visit to Nigeria. He's also been speaking about the exploitation of the Amazon rainforest, much of which is in Brazil and which has been a major international worry. The vast wilderness is a vital regulator of the climate and in August, global alarm was raised over the number of forest fires burning there. The feeling seemed to be that President Jair Bolsonaro was prioritized economic exploitation over environmental protection. Well, the Brazilian Foreign Minister Ernesto Araujo attempted to address all those issues in our exclusive chat. Take a listen. 
Minister Arojo, thank you very much indeed for coming to Arise News. Uh, when most people think of Brazil, football and carnival come to mind. What is it about Brazil that we don't know that we should know? Well, uh, first of all, we uh, have a new government since uh, January the 1st. We still feel new. It's already almost one year, but we uh, are introducing lots of uh, economic reforms, mainly. Uh, so today, I think you can think also about economic growth. We are mm. starting a new cycle of growth in Brazil, which we hope will be a lasting one and sustainable one. Uh, but also, uh, our uh, industrial capacity, uh, we are increasing a lot our presence in uh, worldwide uh, markets. Of course, our agribusiness sector. Uh, so this whole economic uh, side, it's, it's a thriving economy. Uh, Brazilians are... Uh, creative, entrepreneurial people who were a little bit suffocated by the wrong policies for a long time. Mm. And we're trying to liberate this sort of creative energy. Depending on which politics you, <laughs> you yeah. espouse to. No, yeah, but uh, I mean, the, the results of uh, a certain uh, uh, set of, uh, of policies has been stagnation, has been mm. a lack of uh, economic performance. Uh, some of the uh, successful, to a certain uh, extent, social programs uh, are, I mean, they're still there, but what happened with that, uh, people, they, they were not sustainable, so many people uh, were raised to the uh, middle class, and then they fell uh, again into mm. poverty because the economy didn't generate uh, the jobs and the sustainability. But, uh, so overall, uh, we want to uh, present this uh, story of, of a much more competitive and open uh, Brazil. Well, we're going to talk a bit more about the government and what you're doing in Brazil. But let's talk about the purpose of your visit to sure. Nigeria. I understand you've been having bilateral talks here. Yes, yes. No, it's, a, it's been a splendid visit here. Uh, I've had the honor of being with the uh, vice president, the foreign minister, trade minister, uh, and also with the uh, president of the uh, ECOWAS Council. So a very interesting, very productive set of meetings, uh, which we intend as a, a way of uh, building uh, a new relationship on a, different, on a different level with Nigeria. And you talk about building a new relationship. How would you characterize the existing relationship between yeah. Nigeria and Brazil? It's, it's excellent uh, in political terms, still very below its potential in economic and other areas. So that's where we want to, uh, uh, to work more with. Uh, we, of course, have a, a tremendously important cultural uh, base, and uh, uh, I mean, we are so many, many Brazilians uh, uh, have their ancestry here in, mm. in Nigeria, so uh, there's still links, uh, the Yoruba uh, people in Brazil, with uh, their, their, uh, uh, their cousins here in Nigeria. So this is, uh, this is not uh, trivial. That's something that really mm. represents uh, a base that we don't have with many countries, that sort of uh, people interaction and uh, commonality. Uh, this is the base for something else, of course. Uh, but uh, economic potential uh, is enormous. We're still, we're still below that. Uh, we realize how uh, thriving the Nigerian economy is now, mm -hmm. the whole African economy. It's the continent that grows the most in the world. Uh, I think Nigeria just became the largest economy in, in Africa. We're paying a lot of attention to that. Uh, so we, uh, we need to, uh, to explore those possibilities. We're working on that. We're going to organize next year a uh, high-level meeting between the two vice presidents. Yes, I was going to uh, ask yeah. you that because there's something I read called the high-level strategic dialogue right. mechanism, which that's is right. a rather complicated yeah, that's right. term, but, uh, but uh, it's scheduled for March 2020. Right. Just tell us about that and why you maintain that level of strategic dialogue with Nigeria. Fantastic. This uh, is to, to show how uh, special this relationship is. Uh, the idea was very good back in, I think, uh, a few years ago when it was created. We held the first meeting in, in Brazil. But uh, we need to put more, more flesh into it to mm -hmm. deliver results. It's a, uh, it's a mechanism where the vice presidents of both countries coordinate several a agencies uh, under the, uh, the um, let's say, the uh, guidance of uh, the foreign ministries, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, and uh, to try to uh, put the um, 
political uh, push, high level political push into those initiatives. So uh, we inaugurated it a few years ago. We still didn't deliver the results. That's what we intend for, for next year. So it's a way of uh, signaling how s we don't have that with many countries, mm. uh, with only a, a handful of countries, uh, that sort of uh, high level dialogue. So that's to show the priority that we uh, attribute to, uh, to Nigeria. And uh, inside that new uh, strategy, that new vision for, for Nigeria, for Africa, mm. we want to make it a, a cornerstone of, of that strategy. Uh, talking about the relationship, the anecdotally, the relationship between yes. Nigeria and Brazil, I don't know if you know this, but the idea for the capital Abuja came from Brasilia. The, yeah. when, when you started building a brand new capital, people in Nigeria thought, wow, let's build a brand new capital <laughs> as well. Yeah. So anecdotally, that's the, there's a link between sort of Brasilia and the idea of b building a spanking new capital. But, but what sort of trade and economic relations is there at present between Nigeria and Brazil? Wonderful. Well, we have the uh, oil business where, mm. uh, of course, we're both big players, uh, Nigeria more than Brazil, but Brazil will, is becoming uh, one of the, uh, the key uh, players in oil and gas mm. with the, uh, the recent uh, findings there. Uh, so this is a, a, a key uh, a key sector, mm -hmm. uh, defense uh, industry, defense products, and the defense services sector is enormously uh, important already and will become more so. Yesterday, by the way, we held um, a meeting of uh, business people and authorities uh, about the defense uh, industry um, possibilities. So this is very strong, and agriculture. Uh, uh, of course, uh, Brazil is a, an important agricultural exporter, but mm. not only exporter, we, uh, and also we have a plan that we're developing with Nigeria uh, of uh, technology transfer and uh, heavy investment in uh, agricultural mach machinery and production in Nigeria from Brazil. We just have to uh, sort out how to do it, the, right. the financial architect uh, architecture for that. But that's one of the, uh, also the key sectors for us. Uh, it's uh, not only selling, uh, our uh, agricultural products from there, but investing in agriculture in Nigeria, we realize how important this is for the Nigerian government. Absolutely. Uh, so that's, uh, I would say, those sectors are uh, the, the main ones we have right now. Well, I'm going to get back to talk about um, the, the economic trade relationship between Brazil and Nigeria, but mm -hmm. is this your first visit to Nigeria yes. as a foreign minister? And if so, what are your first impressions? Yes. Honestly. <laughs> yes, yeah. First visit as foreign minister and first, first visit uh, at all. Right. Uh, uh, first of all, I, it's a lovely capital. It has a lot to do with, with Brazil. We feel uh, the, uh, the, uh, the atmosphere and the, mm. uh, the planning uh, of the city. Uh, excellent impression. Uh, first of all, the people uh, really have uh, been very well received, my whole delegation here. Uh, it's interesting. We. Uh, talk to the uh, authorities uh, after five minutes uh, it seems like you've been friends for uh, for a long time there's a, an automatic uh, connection I think which has to do with this stronger deeper Brazilian Nigerian ties uh, and uh, the country is obviously a, a thriving economy with the challenges that are similar to those we uh, face uh, in Brazil you can see that uh, but uh, I think those are, if I can say so, good, good problems, mm -hmm. good challenges, because it, the challenges of young nations, young people uh, wanting to, uh, to have jobs, to work, to create, you can see that in, mm -hmm. the, uh, in the atmosphere. Uh, so uh, excellent first impressions. So you talked about the, <coughs> the commonalities between Brazil and Nigeria culturally. Yes. One thing that really fascinates me uh, about Brazil is something called candomblé, yes. um, which is an Afro-Brazilian religion uh, that was established in Brazil by the slave communities and which has different traditions according to which part of, of Africa one originates from. And it, and it wasn't allowed to be practiced, I understand, during the period of slavery. So they paired their deities with Catholic saints and then they worship the saints. So it's a bit like what they have in Cuba called Santeria, is that right? It is, it is. It's uh, uh, also a thriving uh, expression of uh, religious feeling and, and cultural uh, feeling of Brazilian people. It has a lot to do with the, the Brazilian soul, this mm. way of uh, integrating uh, cultures, traditions, 
different faiths. It's a very strong uh, expression of, uh, of faith uh, that is basically a, a Brazilian creation. It's interesting because it's practiced by many people, not all of them of African descent, many uh, people who don't have uh, African uh, ancestors. Uh, it's uh, become part of Brazilian it, it culture. Has, it has, it has. Right. It's concentrated on the Northeast where you have a lot of uh, African uh, mm. community, but lots in, uh, in, in other places of, of Brazil as well. Um, so yes, it's uh, kind of a, a, an original uh, creation that expresses uh, this uh, ability that Brazilian people have, this capacity of uh, peacefully and creatively integrating mm -hmm. uh, different traditions. Now, as we say in Nigeria, now that we've licked the corners of the soup, let's dive straight into the middle yes. of it. Now, there's a lot of concern internationally about the Amazon rainforest. It is a regulator of the world's climate and global alarm was raised in August over the number of forest fires burning in the Amazon. And the feeling was that President Jair Bolsonaro was prioritizing economic exploitation over environmental protection. How credible is that feeling? Uh, it's, not, it's not what's happening in, in Brazil. It's good to have the opportunity to, to, to talk about that. Uh, uh, our uh, perception, our diagnostics about the situation in the Amazon is uh, you need protection, and the protection is there. We didn't change any piece of legislation. Uh, uh, and it's being enforced, in some cases more than before. Uh, it's a challenge to enforce them. Mm. The Amazon is uh, more than 4 million square kilometers. So, but uh, the legislation is there, the enforcement is there. What was lacking, and we're working with, is the economic side. 20 million people live in the Brazilian Amazon. They need jobs, they need uh, opportunities. And uh, in many cases, those jobs are not there, those opportunities are not there, those people then have to resort to illegal activity, illegal logging, illegal uh, mining, for example. So uh, the plan is to uh, create sustainable uh, projects in a much more uh, decisive way, with, with uh, basically with uh, both with domestic and international financing uh, towards uh, what we call the bioeconomy uh, projects uh, in the area of uh, you know, the, the, the sustainable exploitation of some natural resources. Uh, for example, we already have a very competitive uh, cosmetics company uh, with Brazilian uh, technology, Brazilian capital, which works with uh, Amazon uh, essences. And mm -hmm. uh, just to give an example uh, of things we can do, uh, creating good jobs and preserving the forest at the same time, we can talk about ecotourism, we can talk about many other uh, activities in this bioeconomy. Well, there won't be much yeah. ecotourism if you're burning the forest down, will there? Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, but it's not happening. What happens is that every year you have fires during the dry season. Yeah, we know that. Yeah. It's just that the, the, the fires we yeah. saw were unprecedented. Yeah, yeah. no, it was, they, they were not. They were not. Uh, the, uh, we were uh, above, uh, uh, below average, slightly below average for the last 20 years. That's where we have satellite data for. We were much below fires in the years of previous governments that didn't get any criticism because of different reasons, I think, uh, about 10 years ago or, or more. Uh, we're less than half what they had back in 2005, more or less, uh, uh, which was a government that, for some reason, had better press uh, around the world. <laughs> right? uh, the, uh, and uh, the, the data for ac after we started actually uh, working on, on the fire suppression, which didn't happen last year with previous administration, uh, or previous administrations, uh, the, uh, the figures for September after we started that effort are much below mm -hmm. average. So um, uh, the idea that what happened was that uh, people tend to, uh, to think uh, on top of very limited information. So what happened in that case of people saw one or two, one or two pictures uh, of uh, the forest burning and thought this is the whole, this is the whole right. picture. And one of those pictures that were uh, uh, broadcast that was uh, tweeted by uh, a certain uh, European leader uh, was a picture of 20 years ago. So, uh, and this became a big right. scandal. But, but the president, Jair yeah. Bolsonaro, is himself a pretty polarizing figure, both inside and outside Brazil. I mean, he defended the military dictatorship in Brazil, which alarmed many Brazilians. He's called for the relaxation of gun laws in Brazil and internationally. He's talked about the possibility of withdrawing from the 2015 Paris climate 
agreement. I mean, does all that make your life more difficult as foreign minister traveling around the world in defense of Mr. Bolsonaro's policies? Yeah. No, it, it, means my, uh, it makes my life more interesting, I think, because uh, uh, we feel we are working to defend uh, Brazilian interests and uh, Brazilian, the, the values of the Brazilian people. But you can people. see why people get yeah. nervous when he yeah. says he wants to withdraw from the climate yeah. agreement and then yeah, the exactly. fires are burning in the Amazon. Yeah, exactly. Look, uh, Paris Agreement. Uh, what you have today is uh, lots of commitment that, commitments that Brazil, other countries made. Brazil made uh, some of the most ambitious uh, national defined commitments back in uh, 2015. And there's a counterpart from developing countries that should put the money there. Right? Uh, we could already expect a, a $100 billion fund uh, for uh, developing nations, mm -hmm. among them very especially Brazil. This money is not there, not at all, not, not even close. Right? So our position now in the uh, negotiations that are taking place in Madrid is, uh, well, Brazil is totally in with its commitments. What we need is the counterpart. So we uh, question the, uh, the balance of the agreement. Yeah, but is he threatening to withdraw from the agreement? President no, Bolsonaro. no, no, not threatening to withdraw, but we uh, uh, need to, uh, to address the, the real issues. With right, the I, I understand that, but within the last day or so, the teenage climate activist Greta Thunberg has yeah. added her voice to growing international condemnation of a surge of what's been described as anti-indigenous violence in, yeah. in the Amazon. She said that indigenous people are literally being murdered for trying to protect the forest from illegal deforestation. You say it's them who are doing it illegally. They say there's illegal deforestation that's practically murdering them. And President, they say that President Bolsonaro is green lighting that with his hardline anti-environment rhetoric. How true is that? Not at all. It's a lie. Uh, that's why my life is interesting, because uh, we can <laughs> fight for the truth. Right? The truth is completely different from that. And it's amazing, because today in the world, with so much information going around, so mm. many sources of information, people fall for that sort of thing, which has no base in reality. Right? We uh, had an unfortunate case of two uh, indigenous people that uh, died a few uh, days ago we're investigating yeah that. the two people who were shot yes basically. we're investigating that I mean the uh, but uh, the uh, and of course this has to be a uh, the, the crime we have to uh, to uh, to address there's no official policy at all, uh, at all to tolerate any sort of uh, any sort of uh, aggression against indigenous or the reinforced so this is a total construct uh, and if you go to Brazil if anyone goes to Brazil and studies the real situation uh, would he or she would see that it's, uh, it's totally different from the, uh, from the reality. Uh, indigenous lands are 14% of the Brazilian territory. Uh, the challenge is how to uh, avoid uh, the uh, resources there to be illegally used. Uh, what we want is to uh, have the right policies for mining, for example, to be done legally in the benefit of the indigenous communities uh, and, of course, other uh, partners in, in that sort of uh, exploration that's also another issue that we are uh, that we have to address uh, indigenous people's uh, leaders have come to us uh, to the government to ask for that to be allowed because today they sit on top of uh, very rich uh, lands and they cannot do anything and they have to in many cases see uh, illegal activity going going on and uh, not to their to their benefit so um, it's a uh, it's an unfortunate uh, set of uh, uh, declaration well, you, you said here and there. Right. You said one should go to Brazil yes. and, and ask and find out what the truth is. I mean, Miss Thunberg is not the only one saying that there is a spike in the destruction of the rainforest and, and attacks on indigenous communities. I mean, Brazil's Indigenous Missionary Council, which is a rights group, recently reported that 153 indigenous territories had been invaded this year alone, which is twice last year's figure of 76. And they say Mr. Bolsonaro's aggressive talk was at least partly responsible. It's not true. Simply not true. Those people have political interests. They uh, are linked to uh, uh, parties that were in power for uh, almost 20 years and that did actually very little to, to protect those people. They, they talked a lot. They have good rhetoric that resonated well with uh, the uh, developed world but didn't 
didn't do a lot for the Brazilian people. Those people created a system of corruption in Brazil, of crime linked to uh, organized crime, to drug mm. trafficking. They stimulated the same sort of regime in other countries, in South America. They are linked to the, uh, uh, to the situation now in Venezuela. They helped produce that sort of silent genocide that is going on in Venezuela. People are starving because of their government policies. Brazil, unfortunately, in, under different governments, helped finance that. So that's what we are up against. We're up against a system uh, that is very strong and that has connections to, uh, to media, and especially in the developed world, and they uh, deliberately uh, spread uh, the wrong message in Brazil. Why? Because they want power back in Brazil to come back to corruption, to come back to uh, that, those links to organized crime. That's the, that's the, uh, the bottom line. I mean, the, the world is uglier than, uh, than uh, uh, Ms. Thunberg. <laughs> well, let, let's, let's return to your visit to Nigeria and the opportunities that you see here. Brazil at one stage had been considering importing gas from Nigeria to reduce it, its dependence on yes. purchasing gas from Bolivia. What is the state of play there? Yes, yeah, no, Bolivia is uh, a uh, very big uh, provider of, uh, of gas now. Uh, Argentina is developing uh, their gas reserves, so uh, South America can uh, become, I think, self-sufficient in, in gas. We have a lot of potential that we're not exploring yet in natural gas. Uh, we're basically burning the, the gas. Mm. That, uh, well, the same product. thing Nigeria is doing, basically. Exactly. exactly. So, but uh, we, we can totally, I think, cooperate in that uh, with a view of maybe a third markets. But uh, in any case, there. Uh, I mean, we are. are have to change a little bit our, our relationship in that area, our strategy, because mm -hmm. Brazil, which were a net importer, now we're becoming a net exporter of uh, oil and gas products. Uh, some people say that in 10, 15 years, Brazil could be among the three, four largest uh, exporters of, uh, of uh, oil in the world because of the, uh, the, the way now we're approaching the uh, exploration of our reserves. So uh, I think we have to uh, uh, evolve from a, a, a situation where we were basically uh, mm. in, in an asymmetrical way to be in a more cooperative sure. uh, relationship. Well, there. I mean, we're, we're almost uh, out of time. We've got less than a minute to go. But what message will you be taking home to Brazil about Nigeria? Uh, that we uh, need to do more, that we are on the right track, uh, that Nigeria can become one of our main partners, not only in, in Africa, but in the world. Uh, we uh, have to invest in the... Uh, uh, in the very promising sectors that uh, are open here, we need new ideas. Those ideas about investing in agricultural production in Nigeria, for example, that's a new idea. Uh, the, uh, the whole defense uh, uh, industry, for example. So that, that message. Also a partner in uh, security and defense across the South Atlantic, something that we didn't talk about here, but it's an important uh, dimension of uh, our trip to, to the country. We're very concerned about uh, how the South Atlantic is becoming a corridor for illegal activity there mm. again and uh, drug trafficking for example so the coordination among South Atlantic countries and uh, with Brazil and Nigeria as very important players is also important for us and uh, I also bring the message of, uh, uh, of that we share this this concern so um, uh, so basically I, I take the that we are, are on the right track with right. our with our vision of uh, a relationship based on culture uh, trade and investment and uh, defense and security. Okay, Ernesto Araujo, Brazilian Foreign Minister, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much, uh, pleasure to be here. And of course, Ernesto Araujo was speaking exclusively to Arise News there. You're watching the Arise interview, plenty more still ahead, including as the UN marks International Universal Health Coverage Day, we ask how committed are African countries to making bigger investments in health? Stay with us.